Today on the healing bench, we have a really interesting bit of project. This, of course, is a piano stool, claw foot, glass ball, classic, very, very 1900-ish piece of equipment. Of course, it twirls on a big screw to uh, adjust height. So we're just going to pop that up above the thread level. Get out of there, you. There you go. And you probably won't be able to read this on camera. But down here, it says Thomas Organ Co. Uh, Woodstock, Ontario, Canada. And you can see there's a big old dirty weld across here. It's ugly, but very effective. And the little iron plate looks like it's in pretty good functional condition-ish, how it is. Um, so that's good. That's good. Somebody gave it a new life here once. And that's awesome. Now we get to the interesting part. As you may be able to see here, big old crack. Now this, this almost looks like a stool on its own, except it's got the screw, screw jack bit in the middle here. And you can see this was a laminated piece uh, to start with the three sections here, here and here, I believe. And uh, something bad happened to it at one point. It cracked out here, but it's cracked very like into the grain. So it's cracked kind of here and then out that way. And you see on the other side here, a little less wild, but it does kind of run out in the grain. Yeah, this must have been the lamination previously. And then on this side of it, you can see the crack is not. It's got kind of a curve in it and a bunch of mess here. So this thing's had a hard life. And uh, you can see one of these things is not like the other. Somebody's replaced this little structure here, or this little pin, whatever you call that, with a piece off of like a chair or something. God love them. They did a good, good try at her. But three originals. I've called them one, two, three, and four. And if we look, I did a caliper measurement of this distance from the center post to the inside of each leg. And uh, three is four and a quarter in this distance, and the rest of them ranged kind of four and three eighths to four and a half. So you can see this one is sucked in. And that is causing a secondary problem here, where this is now in further, which makes this leg effectively taller, which means the poor thing will not and cannot sit level. So this is a project, but I've started pulling the pulling the joints apart. I had to drill a hole in here to get get a nail out. Somebody's gone through this and nailed the joints together a bunch and stuff. So it'll be a project. Hopefully we can get this into a sort of user-friendly configuration again where it's not woggly on its feet and such. Because, you know, for 120 years old, I think it's still got life left in it. So we'll see what we can do. Alright, stool update the first. I don't need this clamp yet. So, we've taken the mismatched uh, repair stretcher spindle whatever out of here um, that was interesting so you can see there's quite a hole there and the poor whoever whoever installed this was doing their best and god love them but that was a real kind of hack job and you see here that they've just whittled this down so that it would fit in the hole and there's basically just a bunch of glue around the mating surface here and nothing really holding it on the inside. I thought they had nailed it in. I drilled what I thought was a nail hole, but I didn't find any evidence of a nail on this end of it. There was one on this end that I took out. But I didn't want to stress this bottom joint too bad getting this out of the way. Because I figured getting this out first would be make the leg easier to deal with. 
So I actually sawed this end off. And uh, again, we've got <laughs> we've got an interesting history here. This is clearly like whittled down. And uh, again, it's just a whittled pyramid shapey thing. But then uh, if this stool could tell stories, you can see somebody drilled this at once, at one point, and put a dowel in through the end of this bar. It's not a bar, spindle. Possibly when it still belonged to a chair previously. But again, not really much holding this together. There was a nail and that was holding it more than any joinery or glue. I don't know if I'm going to fix that join because it seems strong. But the hole is all wallered out. I just managed to wrestle this out here with a lot of uh, cursing and swearing and heat gun to soften the glue. And that's good. This leg is in, I would call, usable condition. I'll have to clean the tenon up a little. That's fine. I may have to uh, patch in a piece here and redo the hole or bolster this hole up a bit. Some kind of progress is being made, I guess. 3 8 mortise or tenoning chisel or whatever. So I've cut a slot in here. Um, and you can see, perhaps, all this white stuff in here. And that's just about like chalk. So I think that's some kind of a filler that somebody put in there when they redid the, or repaired this crack. Uh, my theory is that I'm going to uh, cut down a little chunk of walnut or something, some kind of a hardwood or maple, and inlay it basically in that spot just to bridge, uh, bridge that chalk junk. So I've cut down here so that it's got a notch, a notch into wood on this side and lots of wood on this side, and hopefully that will give me a place to really sink a piece of patch or you know a patch piece of wood in there where it will get excellent hold from wood glue on each side against actual hardwood again uh, this hole I'm not sure what to do with the leg cleaned up pretty well kind of just scraped the glue and stuff off but I'm not even finished scraping all the glue out of this hole and look how how much mess there is here like this is a wreck that's not even counting the, the stuff I've uh, mortised out. Like in this direction, that's not my work. In this direction, maybe a, a factor, yes, but there's just, it's wallered out something awful. So I'm getting closer to the, the idea of um, oversized drilling this, plugging it with a piece of hardwood dowel, like that, and then re drilling the hole. And that would give it all fresh fresh glue surface all the way around if I drilled that out and just sunk a new dowel a new piece of wood in there and then uh, that may be the way to go for strength so uh, we'll, we'll keep working at it there's lots more to do I'm gonna get the other hole wallered out here but the leg is essentially ready to put back in which is nice Still not sure what I'm doing about the spindle yet. Onward! Alright, so we're going to try this. I glued a little plug of 2x4 into this leg hole just so that the worm part, on the, the screw part on the end of this bit has something to dig into. And I'm going to go sort of roughly here somewhere and try to clean this out to a free, a new like fresh clean hole and then I have a chunk of hardwood dowel and I will then glue in nicely that should make a nice solid structural plug there in theory uh, and then I can come back in and, and drill on the angle to make the leg hole again also working on this to fill it a little piece in here as well but I want to make this structural here instead of just uh, 
globbing more glue into the spot because there's a ton of crappy different glues and stuff in here and I don't know what their origin is or how strong they are or whatever but it was going to be near impossible to clean it all out and I can't make the tenon on the end of the leg any bigger per se so we're going to hoe this out put in some fresh hardwood There. Looks like that's going to cut all, all the way out around the plug there. Get into some nice clean, clean space. Alright, we're really, uh, really getting into her now. Let's get this all wallered out. And you can see maybe that it's pretty clean in here. There's very little old glue or anything left. And uh, just took the tiniest little shave down on this. And that'll hammer in there pretty tightly. But uh, also, before that goes into glue, or when that goes into glue, also made this little bit of walnut. And that will pop in here. I'll leave them both a little proud of the surface and just plane them down flat. But uh, I contoured this to match the hole by uh, putting some paper around the, uh, the, the dowel and, and just rubbing that. <laughs> just like this. I use the actual piece to make the make the uh, circumference there all matchy matchy nicey nicey that'll be pretty close I'm sure between this and that and some wood glue it'll all work out somehow I bet <laughs> probably let's find out this is the stuff that I did the bench with that I got in trouble with because it tacks up so quickly it's not much setup involved here so we'll be okay that way but it says great for cabinets and furniture so why the hell not I get my glue and stick here. I'm sorry, I mean fancy bespoke glue applicator. I'll just glob her in there. Mm -hmm. Lee Valley's gonna start ordering putting these in the orders, I think. The glue applicator thing. Seems like a good idea. And uh, we'll just blob a little on there. This has to be the new structure, so I'm going a little bit silly with glue. This is going to sit overnight, at least, before I mess with it again. I'll make sure we get her down there and around there. All on to here. sure there's a little layer here so nothing's missing any and we'll gob a little here you know the bigger the gob the better the job right right of course and a little bit there a bunch here on the end here where it's going to land against the dowel. Let me get that into her about here somewhere for a sec. And we'll get the dowel lubed up with a little glube. And then we'll start making the magic happen. go. Where's my mallet? <laughs> I 
Well, it's either good or not good or whatever. But it's in there now. Okay. Let me just borrow this a little bit. even drive on that. Make sure it's where I want it. Get some of that squeeze out. Some of that off of there. So I don't have to clean it later. And uh, we're just going to hope for the best. This is how we learn. All right. That'll sit overnight. I'll uh, come back tomorrow. Flush cut that off with the old flush cut saw here somewhere. This thing. And uh, we'll see how we're doing at that point. So, fingers crossed, everybody.